All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, I've been asked to provide an update on a number of developments that TMEC is working on. And so, as Michael shared earlier, I'm the director of housing development for TNDC. I've been with TNDC for four years now. And your name is? My name is Katie Lamont. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, I'm the director of housing development with TNDC, and I've been here for four years. And so it's actually nice to be talking, well, it's always nice to be talking to this group, and I talked to this group within the first month of my joining TNDC. It's nice to be back with you all again. Um, so we actually work on a, quite a number of developments within District 6. We were founded originally in the Tenderloin. It's in our name. And um, so we naturally still have a lot of work here. Curtis, who is joining us, uh, serves on our board. Um, so we're very pleased, um, again, to be speaking with this group and to have such great participation from the underlying community in the, in the various aspects of the work that we do. So we're primarily a housing organization, but we do provide a lot of um, services in our buildings, and we um, have really been growing our community organizing work. And so it's really pleased to hear that your group, Jesse, is supported in, in some way by um, the work of our organizers. But again, I'm really here to talk about our housing development work. So I, I appreciate that um, Michael shared this kind of summary of the projects that we have, and so I'm gonna kind of approach them in these groups. So we do, um, we do new construction of family and senior housing and also supportive housing. We do rehabilitation of existing buildings, and then we also do work in our own portfolio because some of the buildings that we have are older and they need continuous investment over time. So the first group, new construction, We've got three different developments in the work. They happen in District 6 to all be family developments. The first one is Eddie and Taylor, which is located right here on the corner. It's currently a parking lot. We've owned that property for many years, and we um, have just recently assembled all of the financing needed to um, move forward with design and permitting, and we expect to begin construction in the spring. It's going to be 113 units in an eight-story building. Um, and 30 of those units will serve families that are transitioning from homelessness. And another, another, an additional five units will serve adults living with developmental disabilities or um, transitioning from long-term care institutions. A special feature about that development beyond the housing portion is it will have 5,000 square feet of retail on the ground floor. And our goal is to develop, um, is to attract a healthy food use and a community control and community sympathetic use. So we have a, um, a committee that we are working with um, that includes various stakeholders throughout the Tenderloin. I believe Michael, you serve on the committee, is that correct? For what, food? Yeah, for yeah. food for the Eddie okay. Taylor. So I hope you've heard I've incorporated yeah, your I feedback sure. from my last presentation. Um, anyway, so we're working right now to um, uh, you know, augment the work that we've been doing in part of collaboration with DPH and community members around healthy corner stores, looking to expand our work with healthy food in that space. Does anyone have any questions or comments or feedback about that particular development? Yes. Yeah, I've always been advocating that you con that the uh, contact with uh, uh, Rainbow Grocery or some of the other collectives and right. collaboratives because they, they, are more, they would be more in sync with what the, the people here, what, what, what the people here would like to do. Right. And they have. Uh, they've been talking about for a long time, oh, let's get a little Safeway, get, let's get I didn't say Safeway, I learned. Okay, but you know, <laughs> I mean, it's sort of like, a, I mean, we need some, uh, we need an entity that is committed to stay here. Right, right, so I remember the, I, we, I was presenting earlier to the Tenderloin Futures Collaborative, and so trying to reflect some of the feedback that I heard there. So I also did hear, consider businesses that are already here in the Tenderloin, like the Tip Top Market. Mm -hmm. um, and there was another co-op that you guys mentioned. I think it's out in the sunset. I'm not recalling the name. Other Avenues. Other Avenues, yes, thank you. And I cannot promise that this will lead to anything, but I just recently realized that, a, anyway, a, I would say a friend, but that's maybe a, a, an acquaintance from, that I know from high school who's also an artist, happens to be a lifer at Rainbow Co-op. So I, at least I know yeah. someone 
um, that we could engage with to have that conversation. Thank you. Um, yes. There is a, is a meeting tomorrow with, uh, from the Budget and Finance Committee uh, mm -hmm. at City Hall, and part of what they're what uh, so people who work with the uh, Housing Food Coalition are, are going to be there to, in order to encourage them to increase the options of, uh, available to people who are for uh, healthy foods. They, they have a little uh, letter of support. Do you mind if I pass it around? Oh, no, of course. Okay. And then the, the, the hearing is tomorrow at 1 o'clock if anybody can make it. Yeah. Okay. Do you need me to repeat any of that for this? No. Okay. So thank you for that feedback and thank you for being on the committee. Um, should I move on to the next one? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I realize there's nine, so I'll <laughs> <laughs> signal me and speed it up. Uh, 1036 Mission. Um, that is another new construction family development. It is nine stories. It will include 83 family units. It's between 6th and 7th Street. Um, it's now fully funded and we are working towards closing on the construction financing and starting construction um, this summer, probably in July. And that development includes 40 units that are targeted for formerly homeless families. An interesting feature about that project is next to the parking, a federally owned parking lot next to a former courthouse. And so it has this big wall that neighbors want us to make look nice. So it will have some public art, some actually honestly kind of low budget public art there because in the future it might get developed. And we'll have a really interesting public art piece at the entryway, um, which will be really cool for you guys to check so out. Is where the parking lot is now? Be yeah, so there's actually two parking lots. Right, right. It's in the smaller parking right, lot, okay. the one that's like actively used. Right next to the program. Yeah, I think it's called Town Park. Yeah, okay. It's the current operator. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions about that one? Um, the next one is in Mission Bay and um, has a bunch of different names. It's called Mission Bay South Block 6E. It was also called 1304th Street. I think we're going to end up calling it by a different address. So just so you know in the future, um, this is going to be 143 family units. Um, it's also fully funded, and we're moving towards closing on the construction financing and starting construction this summer, probably August or September. Um, interesting feature about this project, it's on 4th Street, which is envisioned to be you know, a commercial, uh, desti not destination, but like a sort of neighborhood commercial um, to have storefronts along the whole, I think it's two block strip. Um, um, I think it's Mission Mission Boulevard Commons. I'm embarrassed. Is it right by the, by the, the, uh, the uh, channel, the canal? No, so it's like there's the channel, it's like two blocks in from there. There's like a, a, a two-way street with a median. It's, it's on Mission Bay Boulevard, I think it is. Yes. Um, I didn't get a conversion of on that project. You did not? I can't send you what we have. This is one of those weird environmentals where it was studied under the, the Mission Bay Master Plan. But they did have to do some minor amendments to that because the Warriors came in and then they got sued. So I will um, I will look for what we have. I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure how much there is a project well, specific what, document. What you can do is uh, if you can get me the planner's name and phone number. Okay. Um, then I call the planner and plan it. Okay. And I uh, get it through that. Okay. Thank you. Something interesting about this project is going to have a significant amount of retail in it, and and one of the. Um, one of the, really the only business we've identified at this point to go into the retails, we've attracted 826 Valencia, which is a literacy program um, targeted towards young people that has an office, you know, their original location in San Francisco was in the Mission. They're actually opening a satellite location now in San Francisco on Golden Gate. And so TNEC has been, you know, in some degree of partnership with them, um, with their expansion into the Tenderloin and our um, working with them to once they've kind of done the work on this expansion a couple years down the road when that other project comes online to expand there. So we're very excited um, about having that opportunity here for our young, young people in the Tenderloin and then to be able to bring that program to Mission Bay as well. So 
Are there any other questions about this one? Okay. So then I, this next group is, um, these are rehab of existing buildings that um, all four of these um, are, are, were or are owned by the San Francisco Housing Authority. They are part of a much larger program that the city of San Francisco and the Housing Authority put together to recapitalize 29 of their senior and disabled buildings and also some of their family housing developments. So TDC was selected as a developer of five of them. Four of them are in District 6. And we are, the, the work is divided into two phases. So the phase one developments include 430 Turk and 939 to 951 Eddy Street. So th for these two developments, the building, the ownership of the buildings has been transferred to a TNDC controlled entity, and we are now in the midst of rehabbing them. The underlying land is still owned and will be always owned by the San Francisco Housing Authority, so we have a ground lease from them. Um, the, the scope of the renovations is um, driven largely by seismic retrofitting, so making them earthquake safe or safer, um, accessibility improvements, um, and then you guys probably saw in the paper, there's elevator upgrades that are needed at most of the buildings, uh, particularly given that they serve senior and disabled, um, and then there are also some unit upgrades happening. Um, particular things about them, 430 Turk is the building that the ground two floors are actually commercial space and they were the main offices for the housing authority they have since relocated their main offices out to egbert avenue like in the bayview they are considering coming back to this location or selling it or leasing it to someone else to make money to support their operations so we basically the first two floors are still owned and controlled by the housing authority and the housing has a limited portion of the ground floor, basically the entryway and um, common areas. So a major feature of these two rehabs and the other um, housing authority rehabs as well is to increase the amount of um, community or service space. So we're adding um, more offices for property management and tenant services. We will have more um, social workers on site with our program that have been in place currently with the Housing Authority, and we are going to have dedicated um, community meeting space. So like for now at the Housing Authority, the 430 Turk, there's a commission room which was used by tenants and by the Housing Authority, so now we're gonna have dedicated space just for the tenants. Um, something that came up at the uh, the Tenderloin Futures Collaborative that might be of interest to you all is that the the tenant there are tenant associations in place at each of the Housing Authority buildings, and those will be remaining in place. And the funding that they get is going to remain. Some of the, the sort of structural sources of funding will remain in place. So under the new um, financing and ownership and management by TNDC. We will still have an obligation that the Housing Authority had to, on a monthly basis, fund the tenant associations. And in addition to that funding that comes from operating revenues, from rents and income and subsidy payments, there's also like if there's vending machines and laundry machines, any income derived from those also goes to support the tenant associations. Um, so we have been working with the tenant association leaders to help, you know, with communication around. What, what needs the building has, and then what we incorporate into the rehab scope, and then when things are gonna be happening and who's gonna be affected. Um, another big piece around the RAD, the, the RAD, um, and RAD stands for Rental Assistance Demonstration. It's a sort of a, a shorthand way of describing the program um, that the mechanics of it basically facilitate um, bringing money in to do capital improvements. Um, it, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Uh, yes, I'm just trying, oh, <laughs> relocation, that's what it was. Okay. Something important. Um, it's very, so there's been a lot of concern just globally around will this lead to displacement? 
and it is um, explicitly non-displacement, so it's very important to HUD. It's also very important to local, the local government administering the program. It's also important for a group like TDC that's engaged in this work. So some of the repairs do require that people um, be temporarily vacate their units to facilitate, um, in some cases, structural improvements to walls, and in other cases, like replacing kitchens or bathrooms. But in all cases, people will have the right to return. And for the most part, people are being relocated within the building in which they live. So they're having to change apartments, but not um, their building. But there are some cases where people are, are, have been asked to move off-site. And generally, we have been able to recruit volunteers who are more willing or able to do that. Um, and so the Housing Authority has been cooperative in that process. We've been able to do that because they have held units vacant to a, a accommodate people moving temporarily within the building. Are there questions or concerns about that? <coughs> yeah. And now there are some, uh, there are some uh, agreements with HUD mm -hmm. that are not TNDC. Um, they, and there is some sort of a shift in some property managements to have go in, enter into something with HUD where um, they call it they call the group of residents that live there a community, and apparently there's going to be some there might be some different uh, ground rules and things. Do you know anything about that? I am not sure about this particular language you're saying about community, but I do know this this current effort is um, building on some lessons learned from some of the experience that the city had with earlier Hope SF or Hope 6 development mm -hmm. and um, concerns the tenants had about new property management and how management was conducted. And so the city has had a very heavy hand in um, managing how um, this transition is, is working and what the rules of the game are going to be. And so there's sort of two things that have had to be balanced. One is, um, and, and so to directly answer that question, the city has various, they call them cohort, the cohort of developers that are working on um, RAD. So that includes TBC and Mercy and Chinatown Community Development and Bridge Housing, and then there's other smaller developers like Meta, wow. which is in the Mission, and CHP here, and then bigger developers like John Stewart Company and Related. Um, so all of these various players um, are all have all been asked to come to various meetings focused on services. So anyway, one of those meetings has been on house rules and the lease. Okay, and so, every, so the the house rules were mediated among this whole group and incorporated some of the feedback that um, the, the city and the housing authority commission received from tenants about things that were challenging um, in the earlier waves of um, of Hope Six and Hope SF. Would this include project based project based housing, perhaps that would involve all private owners? I don't know. I mean, I think I think what you're asking is who is who is doing the development. No, I mean, no. This is this is just a, a, an aside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that uh, there's. Could you direct you to the project we're talking about? Not okay. Like that, sure. Okay. Yeah. The map, so okay. Not to the project you're I understand. About. I was just trying to find out if. Uh, <coughs> oh, I think I know what you're asking. Yeah, we can take it up offline. But okay. no, I think this only applies to this program. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So yes. these, for these, were, these were funded by, by the federal government before, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what happens is that the, so this was owned and controlled by, ultimately by the U.S. government, right. administered by the local housing authority. Right. Um, and what has happened is that, I mean, my, my personal view of the situation is in many ways, housing authorities or public housing was really set up to fail. So the house, the you know, the US HUD makes a payment to the housing authority on a per unit basis to, to support operations and capital improvements. 
And what happens is it's not enough money to actually operate the property and make capital improvements. Right. And so what the RAD program does